Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in tonight. Odds are if you're watching this you already know who I am, but in case you don't, my name is Thomas Zuber and this is my graduate conducting recital. It's been an interesting road over the past two years getting me here. Uh, if you'd come to me back in 2018 and told me the next year I'd be moving to Dallas to start my master's, I would have thought you were crazy. If you had told me that in the middle of all this a pandemic would have broken out and caused a lot of problems, I would have said, why bother going? I don't have that opinion nowadays. I think this has been a fabulous experience for me. It's been a great two years and I'm very excited to present this concert to you all as the culmination of those two years of experience. It's a wonderful program we've got planned for you all tonight, so let's go ahead and dive in and talk a little bit about it. The first piece on our program tonight is written by a composer who doesn't really need much of an introduction. Claude Debussy is one of the most famous French composers we have nowadays, but there's quite a bit about him that people don't know. For instance, Debussy spent a lot of his life running away from the Germans he thought was all over classical music at the time, and to be honest, it was. So to try and escape this Germanness of his predecessors, he started looking at these vague and abstract musical ideas that he thought might create something new. Those ideas, combined with the fact that France was very obsessed with Eastern Asian cultures at the time, led to something that other people would come to call Impressionism, because it evoked a lot of the same ideas that the visual arts movement at the same time that was going on at the same time would have evoked. This was the style that Debussy wrote in. Now, while all this was going on and while Debussy was getting his start as a composer, other where, or elsewhere in France you had Stéphane Malarme and a bunch of other poets rising to prominence and they would come to be called the French Symbolists. French Symbolists were an interesting group. They were inspired by Edgar Allan Poe and they were really interested in exploring ideas of the grand, the illogical, and the intuitive. Because of this, a lot of their poetry reads in a rather um, obscene way if you're not prepared for it at first. Now, I mentioned Malarme specifically because he wrote a poem that was uh, rather famous at the time. This is his most famous work. It was called The Afternoon of a Fawn. Now, this poem, much in line with the movement that he came from, is a very dense read. It's very interesting, to say the least, if you go ahead and take a read from it. But after Debussy had finished reading it for the first time, he felt inspired to write a bunch of different pieces based on it. He was going to write a prelude, an interlude, and a paraphrase finale. Unfortunately, because this is just how things go, he only got the prelude finished, and so that piece now is called Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn. Now, originally, Malarme was not happy at all with the idea of his poem being used to create music or to inspire music. He wanted it to be completely separate from everything. However, after the premiere of the work, Debussy received a rather nice letter from Alarme saying that he was actually quite pleased with how everything turned out. Nice way to, for that little story to turn out. One last thing I want to mention about the piece is usually Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn is written for a rather large orchestra and is presented with a lot of performers on stage. Of course, due to the current COVID situation, we're not able to put that many people on this stage, but luckily there is a gentleman from the UK by the name of Ian Farrington who did a rather fabulous arrangement of this work for 12 players works out perfectly. We can put 12 people on a stage, no problem. So we're very excited to go ahead and present to you all Ian Farrington's arrangement of Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn by Claude Debussy. I'll be back in a minute to talk about the next piece.
Odds are if you missed my announcement from earlier, you're probably sitting here looking at your screen going, aren't there two other pieces on the program? Why is he talking again? Well, unfortunately, due to some technical difficulties we had the other night in the hall that I was not aware of, the latter two pieces on the program, the recordings we got, have been rendered unusable. <laughs> if you have been following this uh, recital on my end from the beginning, as many of my close friends have, you'll know that this is probably par for the course of this time. Things have been a little interesting getting this whole ordeal together, but nevertheless, I've been dealt a hand and, and I'm going to make the best of it. So, at the moment, all I have to show you all for this recital is the Debbie Sue you just watched. I hope you really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to put together. It was one of the greatest musical challenges I have faced so far, and I'm very glad that I got the chance to do it. Before I let you all go, there is a few things I want to go ahead and say that were included in some other program notes I was going to play for you all, but I don't really feel that it's uh, appropriate to do so now that there's not a performance to follow it. So instead, I'd like to talk about a few things. I'd like to go ahead and say some thanks. I'd like to thank my family, who's been supporting me through the past two years of me being here in Dallas and doing this Masters and all the craziness that comes with that. And... It's just so nice to know I have such a loving family behind me. Um, all of you, I'm so glad that you've been here to back me up, and I really appreciate it. I want to take a moment and thank my current conducting teacher, Dr. Paul Phillips, without whom I would not be in Dallas, and I would not have completed this master's, nonetheless, to the degree that I've managed to. I would like to thank my previous conducting teachers, Dr. Sean Smith and Dr. Jonathan Govius. Without you two, I would not have had a chance to really make it this far anyway, and I hope that what you saw was a fit, uh, fitting culmination of everything that I've done so far. Um, I'd like to take a moment and thank my friends, both on the East Coast and here in Dallas, who've been supporting me through all of this. It's been an interesting situation, but I've been very, very happy for all of it to have played out and to be behind me now. And lastly, I want to thank everyone you did see perform tonight and everyone you should have seen perform tonight. If things had been different, I would have loved to have shown you all everything that we had done on Thursday night, everything we had recorded, but unfortunately, things don't always go to plan. One thing I do want to say about these lovely people who played for me is that they chose to play. There was no obligation for them, there was no grade on the line or this, that, the other. They chose to be present, they chose to play for me, they chose to be part of this, and that means a lot to me. And I want to make it clear that I am overjoyed and very, very thankful to each and every one of them for giving me the honor to stand in front of them and lead them through the repertoire we got through. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking now. I want to thank you all again for tuning in. I want to say big thanks you know, to everybody who was involved in this project, and I will see you all in the next one.